Hi there, Awana families. This is Pastor Carlos once again with this week's Council Time message. I trust that you are well in the Lord and I pray you are enjoying our journey together through Paul's letter to the Philippians. Today we come to Philippians chapter 3 verses 17 to 21. Do you remember when you first learned to walk? Do you remember that? Uh, probably not. Uh, there were some important milestones you needed to master along the way. As a baby, uh, you needed the strength to lift your wobbly head. And after that, you needed to learn to crawl on your hands and feet. Somewhere along the way, you needed to, to pull yourself up in order to, to practice standing. This required a lot of practice as you no doubt fell many times before you learned to keep your balance. Once you mastered standing, you needed to take steps. It started with baby steps until you were able to put one foot in front of the other and finally learn to walk without falling. And another thing, you needed examples to follow. You likely observed others walking and then began the process of following their example. And you also needed help along the way. Your parents likely helped you up, held your hands, and then encouraged you to take your steps. Eventually, perhaps they let go of your hand. Uh, you can bet that as your parents observed you learning to walk on your own, they beamed with excitement. Uh, the topic of our text today is, you guessed it, walking, but not the type of walking I just described. Today's text is about spiritual walking, walking with Christ, walking in a Christ-like manner. Let us begin by reading the text, Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 to 21. The Apostle Paul says, Brethren, join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. For many walk, of whom I often told you and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, and whose glory is is in their shame, who set their minds on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of His glory by the exertion of the power that He has even to subject all things to Himself. That is good news. And I am entitling my message today, Walking as We Should Walk. Four instructions to keep in mind as we seek to walk as we should. Let us begin with instruction number one. Uh, we should follow the example of Paul when it comes to walking. We should follow Paul's example. Uh, Paul declares in verse 17a, Brethren, join in following my example. Paul begins with an affirmation that his readers are brethren. He calls them brethren. They are genuine children of God. And then Paul issues the command to follow his example. This command to follow his example is found in other passages as well. Uh, in 2 Thessalonians 3, 7, Paul says, You ought to follow our example. And then in verse 9, Paul again describes how he has offered himself as a model to the Thessalonians and follows up by saying that you might follow our example. Clearly, Paul presents himself as an example and he calls his readers to follow his example. Elsewhere, he says, follow me as I follow the Lord. Well, there is much that we can learn from Paul. We can learn about his life through the book of Acts, as well as through the letters that Paul wrote to other believers. Uh, we have already learned much about Paul 
from his letter to the Philippians. You can go back and read through the letter and learn much about Paul. Uh, he was a God-fearing, Christ-exalting, church-loving, suffering servant who walked in humility and joy before the Lord and by the power of the gospel as it was unleashed in and through his life. While there is much more to be said about Paul, this is a good start. Again, we should follow the example of Paul when it comes to walking. Let us now turn to instruction number two. Uh, we should observe those who walk in a manner like Paul. We should observe those who walk like Paul. Paul in the passage goes on to say, and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. Take note of the word observe. To observe implies seeing. Paul tells his readers that they need to see with their own eyeballs what the godly walk looks like. It is one thing for us to hear about the godly walk, but it is another thing for us to observe with our own eyes the godly walk. Paul understands the need for God's people, for us to observe how godly people live their lives. Boys and girls, if you are going to walk as you should walk, you will need to observe the godly walk of other believers. Perhaps your parents are great examples for you to observe. Perhaps folks in your church are great examples for you to observe. And throughout your life, you will need to look to the example of others as a way of learning how to walk as you should walk. We all need examples to learn from. And this brings us to instruction number three. We should follow and observe those walking in godliness. Why? Because there are many who walk in an ungodly manner. Many walk in an ungodly manner. Paul says in verses 18 through 19, For many walk, of whom I often told you and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. Paul here warns us that there are many who walk in an ungodly manner. We must beware of this, and we must be careful not to follow their ungodly example. Paul has warned his readers of the evil influence of ungodly people many times before, and he is warning his readers yet again. He does so in tears. His heart breaks over the sad spiritual condition of these non-believers. We should never look down on non-believers. Our hearts should be moved with compassion. We should shed tears over the spiritual state of these non-believers. Uh, notice how Paul describes these non-believers. First, he calls them enemies of the cross of Christ. Evidently, they reject Christ. They reject the good news, the gospel. They fail to affirm that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ who died on a cross for our sins alone. They are enemies of the cross of Christ. Second, their end is destruction. They will end up in the eternal lake of fire unless they repent of their sin and embrace Christ as their Lord and Savior. This is a fearful fate for those who reject Jesus Christ. Third, their God is their appetite. In other words, they live for the purpose of feeding their own appetites. They are not submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. Instead, they live for themselves. They live to feed their own desires. Their God is their own stomach, their own appetite. Fourth, they glory in their shame. This is simply a way of saying 
they do evil and then celebrate the evil they do. They commit shameful deeds and then they glory in the shameful deeds they do. They celebrate their sin. And then fifth, they set their mind on earthly things. They have no interest in Christ. They do not set their minds on things above. Instead, they love the world and the things of the world. They are consumed with what the world has to offer. They have their heart set on worldly fame and fortune. They seek after the sinful ways of this fallen world rather than seeking and savoring the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's point is that there are many who walk in these worldly ways, and we must not allow ourselves to be influenced by such ungodliness. Well, let us now turn our attention to instruction number four. We should follow and observe those walking in godliness because of who we are in Christ, because of who we are in Christ, our position in Christ. The Apostle Paul says in verse 20, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of His glory by the exertion of the power that He has even to subject all things to Himself. That is great news. Young people, if we have embraced Christ as our Lord and Savior, then the following statements are true about us. First, we are citizens of heaven. I am an American citizen. I also happen to be a New Zealand citizen as well. I have dual citizenship. But more importantly, I am a citizen of heaven. My citizenship in heaven trumps every other earthly citizenship. And if you have accepted Christ, you too are a citizen of heaven. Second, we are waiting for the sure return of Christ. The Lord Jesus is on his throne right now. He rules and he reigns as King of kings and Lord of lords from his throne on high. But the day will come when he returns to earth to set up his earthly kingdom. Third, we will be transformed. The word is metamorphosis. It's the idea of how a caterpillar gets metamorphosized into a butterfly. This is the type of transformation that Paul is talking about. We will be transformed. Our earthly bodies will be laid aside and we will be given heavenly bodies. Our new bodies will be without sin and sickness. We will not be subject to disease, dying, and death. We will live in our perfect bodies forever. Fourth, we will be subject to Christ. Part of what this means is that we will live in perfect submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we will finally be as we were meant to be. Uh, we will glorify the Lord in our desires, our attitudes, our thoughts, our words and deeds. Our affections will be for Christ and we will live to glorify the Lord perfectly. That day is coming and we should follow and observe those walking in godliness because of who we are in Christ and what we will be someday. And so, four instructions for us to keep in mind as we seek to walk as we should walk. First, we should follow the example of Paul. Second, we should observe those who walk in a manner like Paul. Third, we should follow and observe those walking in godliness because there are many who walk in an ungodly manner. And fourth, we should follow and observe those walking in godliness because of who we are in Christ. We are citizens 
of heaven. Earlier, I mentioned how our earthly parents beamed with joy as they observed us learning to walk. And do you know what? Even more so does our Heavenly Father beam with joy. He beams with excitement as He observes us who are in Christ and who, through the power of the gospel, are learning to walk in a Christ-like manner. Boys and girls, I pray that you walk in a manner that is honoring to the Lord. And thank you so much for listening. May the Lord greatly bless each and every single one of you.